welcome to Atlanta. How the hell are you? Oh, I love it here. Yeah, you do? Oh man, I've had um, I've had some home cooking. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Did I, you go to like Mary Max Tea Room? Where would you do? No, I just had a uh, breakfast sandwich from the Homewood Suites Diner. That's uh, oh fuck it up. Diner. I just called it a diner. Yeah, it's I wouldn't a, go that far. <laughs> it's yeah. It's a um, I don't even know if they have a proper kitchen, but and I don't want to fully come on here and knock the Homewood Suites. Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. I think it's, it might be Homewood Inn and Suites. Mm-hmm. It's inundated with a lot of <laughs> people that you forgot we have on this planet. Like when you go to Walmart anywhere in the Midwest, uh-huh. like past eleven forty-five, and you go, "Oh, I forgot we have that guy roaming the earth." Yeah, like rat tail, starter jacket, mesh shorts, mayonnaise stains, implant scar. His kids' phrases are like, "Hey, can I borrow some Neosporin?" Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Homewood Suites is filled with a lot of like just uh, just people that you're like. I, I'm curious about where they're coming in and where they're going that, to. That's how I feel at any um, airport in Ohio, period. Oh, yeah. Like, going to the Midwest, specifically Ohio, was a real culture shock for me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, salt to the earth. And I'm Southern, so I feel like Southern people are real salt to the earth. But being Midwest is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was also the person who constantly is asking, can I borrow Neosporin? <laughs> <laughs> I am the Neosporin person. You are? I just come, I just get easily Nicks and injured. Nicks and cracks. Nicks and knacks and just always like a bug bite. I don't know what it is. It's my blood type. The fucking buggies love the me. They love you. Yeah, they love me. So you take it as a compliment. I, I'm being negative. What Apparently. sort of bugs out here are the main bugs that, like, you don't want to get bit by? I mean, we have, like, you know, mosquitoes that can t- take off a large cat. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just saw this video um, that my wife sent me of a, because we're always terrified of our little 10-pound cavapoo pickles getting, yeah. you know, snatched up by a hawk or that, an owl. Yeah. By the way, owls, if you're listening, just go away. Just fuck off. I don't know what you do other than terrify Children, Jews, <laughs> um, non-Jews. Don't, I don't know why that was specific to my people, but the, everything. They seem a little dicey. They seem a little dicey to the Jews, they're okay? The way, <laughs> maybe it's just the way they like quickly look. It's very Nazi Germany with the yeah. head tilts. Yeah. But they are the creatures where I'm like, I think they did one animated film about owls. I don't know what it's called. Quickly was it Disney? This. It was, it was, I, <laughs> it was Tina like, knows. Tina knows Tina, if it's Disney. Yeah, I wish she knew it offhand. It was, I don't know if it was DreamWorks. It might have been a weird comp- Yeah, Legend of the Guardians. Legend of the Guardians. Okay. No thanks. Table for one. And, and it's not like a redeeming story. I don't even, I saw the trailer and that was enough for me to go pass. Yeah. Not smash. And so, <laughs> it's Warner Bros. Oh. Hey, well. Warner Bros would love to work with you, but not on any owl type projects you know i had a cat straight up i had a cat that was got um snatched I, that got snatched by a hawk and my dad was smoking a cigar outside on our porch and he came in and my dad had a thick southern accent and all he said was kitty's gone hawk got him and we were, i was like oh. what and he just said kitty's gone hawk got him and i was like what do you mean and he couldn't get the words out lower and like, yeah yeah and it was just so now all the time whenever i'm you know just in a mood i'll just say kitty's gone hawk got him That's and the hawk just really took the sweet. fucking cat and we had fat cats like a 20 pound cat up off the off the the uh, the porch of our he see it get he saw it he was sitting there he didn't even have time to like like look up it was all of a sudden and that's when we redid our our backyard <laughs> and made it what hawk kitty gun yeah hawk got him proof. yeah yeah well we put in like you know a nice pool so if you put in a saltwater pool apparently it deters them no way yeah yeah no that was just that's my what ex- pool guy tells you, to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, uh, the bigger pool if you want a hot tub and a jacuzzi yeah water you will have hot. no vermin yeah. no vermin <laughs> yeah uh but so um she sent me this video of a giant it looked like an ostrich meets a peacock meets a hawk meets a condor meets a falcon meets a pterodactyl meets a raptor meets a rick glassman all in one bird <laughs> and it was just neurotic and and just the and the was this on your property no sorry this is a video that she just sent me okay it was like a high rise it looked like arizona vegas barstow it looked deserty in the boonies okay we're like there's always one dairy queen yeah where there's a guy who, well, at least in my experience, I went to a Dairy Queen in Barcelona on the way to Vegas once. I'm standing in line, and uh, there's a, a guy in front of me ordering a blizzard, and the guy just goes, oh, sorry, man, we just ran out of blizzards. And a guy, three guys behind me goes, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> and the guy at the counter goes, I was just joking, man. Sorry, I've been here for like three days straight. And he goes, why the fuck would you joke about no blizzards, dude? 
We're all coming from long ways to get Oreo Cookie Blizz, and that is fucking not That's right. my order. That's my order. Me Oreo too. Cookie Blizz. I love you. And I also oh. used to love a peanut buster parfait. Did you ever get one of sure. those? Oh, yeah. Where it's a layer to the hot fudge, the peanuts, the... the Preaching to the choir. Yeah, you get it. The dilly bars were a nice... Yeah, mix oh, I fucking love a dilly bar. Dairy Queen doesn't get enough love, but I think that's because they get too much hate for their other items. I I don't not... know why they press so hard on the chicken tender basket. You hey, know guys. what I mean? Hey. Right. Stop the, it. The Texas toast... It wasn't a win. Oh, I didn't even know that was on the menu. Oh, they're big on this, like, Texas toast with the chicken tenders and oh. the shitty fries. It's out of a Cisco the bag. It's not fresh. don't look like burgers. Yeah, yeah we're like... good. Stick to what you know. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. stick to what you know. That mm-hmm. should be Hot Eats Cool Treats has gotten you this far. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hot Eats Cool Motherfucking Treats. And we, yeah. we only have Hot Eats for the slogan. No mm-hmm. one's thinking. No one hears Hot Eats Cool Treats and goes, oh, that's right. Let me get some chicken tendies and a dilly bar. No, no, no. It just completes the fun catchphrase slogan hot eats cool treats but everyone's hearing cool treats when i think hot eats cool treats i think wendy's because you know when i'm severely hungover, i will get into the shower with a frosty a chocolate (laughs) frosty (laughs) sit let the rain fall down let it wash away like yeah if if you're really fucking hungover, you sit in the in the bottom of your uh you know tub or your shower shower is underrated and then eat your frosty and then have the fries i think great spicy chicken sandwich good french fries hot eats cool treats wendy's Wow. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If you had to be, and I hate these questions, but uh-huh. the stranded on a desert island. Yeah, I love or, these questions. I, like I should be asking you these questions. I like, no, no, well, I'll, I'll respond after. I like <laughs> this better than the, like, if you had the last meal before they fucking killed you. Yeah. Like, that person's <laughs> always like, I got a girl once with her, uh, uh, we dated for a while, uh, about three, four years. It was long distance. Mm-hmm. And then she fucked a cameraman in Reno. Um, and, uh, <laughs> it's always and fucking Reno. There's a cartoon. I made a song about it. Um, it's on my YouTube. Just type in Adam Ray, Reno, Cheater, and mm-hmm. it's animated. The guy actually ended up seeing it because he still worked there. Um, no one ever leaves Reno. That's the thing. If you if you start in Reno, you don't leave oh, Reno. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. It. Uh, I knew when I shook his hand, I was like, we were 24. He was like the only guy that was in the vicinity of her age. I think he was like 30, 31. Everybody, and he was dating, but everyone else at the news station was married uh-huh. and like with kids and just like older. And so he was the only guy close to her age. And I remember he, I just shook his hand and I was like, you're going to fuck her. Yeah, I just knew the way he shook my hand. I think he even tickled it with his finger, being like, "It's a preview of what she's gonna get." And I was like, "Yikes!" But also, good on you, um, because it is Reno, and I feel bad that she's there. But um, so she's still there. She's still with him. No, now she's in San Fran with a kid. I don't follow Facebook. (laughs) And uh, did I? I did not know that when you follow somebody on LinkedIn, that they get a notification every time you click on their profile. I found an ex from college. I was like, let's just see what he's up to. Aggressively clicking. I got super fucked up one night, like super high. It's fun sometimes. It's It's fun sometimes. It's also you're just taking a deep dive down that lane of like, this is the whole point of social media is to like check in every now and then to be like. You know, how's Emily Leon, the, the first girl in seventh grade that had boobs that then became Rain, the stripper, in Seattle? Mm-hmm. Coincidence. Nice play on words with the name. Mm-hmm. I want to check in to see if she's still dancing away. Yeah. So you check in on this guy. I checked in on this guy because I'm not obviously a real uh, office professional. I don't have a LinkedIn. So I made a link. Oh, I had some like boomty LinkedIn from like, I don't know, trying to get a restaurant job years ago. And so I clicked. Boomty LinkedIn, by the way. Yeah, sounds boomty like LinkedIn. Of a terrible detective or a great <laughs> porn star. Boomty LinkedIn coming to the stage next, fellas. Get your tens out. I had no idea that you got a notification anytime somebody l- clicks on it. So I had like aggressively just kept clicking on it for like three days. And I was like, oh, this. And he never reached out, but he now knows that I just aggressively was stalking. Mm-hmm. What, um, mm-hmm. what, how is that maybe a, are you sh- late night drunk shopping or deep diving on people or TikTok rabbit holes? Like if you've got a. I'm now in a, I had to get off TikTok for a month because it got so toxic. I would be literally so deep into shit yeah. that, and like last night, so I recently got on it because I, I was, I feel like I've been following Taylor Swift, okay? Everywhere I perform, she's also performing there that weekend. So I always, I'm like, now I'm just like adjacent. I'm like, I'm not a big Swifty person, love her. She's very talented, but I was never considered a Swifty. So now I'm deep into like all of like the Taylor Swift conspiracy theories. I was up till 3.45 last night, just fucking dialed in, looking at this shit. Conspiracy theories? Yeah, there's, there's it's layered. It's like so what? fucking layered. Layered. Her real name is actually Susan. I don't know. No, like literally if she, if she wipes her brow at a show, they're like, this is what this fucking means. This is a jab to like John Mayer. I'm like, I think she's just sweaty. Oh like, I don't know what to tell you. God, yeah. One, yeah. 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 She used her left hand and that's his. 
That was his go-to hand to give her massages with. Exactly. It was a signal. Yeah. Whoa. I bet yeah. she'd. I bet she would love you. I bet she does. Love, I bet she knows who you are. No, absolutely not. You don't think? No, no. She follows no one on Instagram. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, maybe low key. She's got a finsta. I know all famous people have finsta. Oh, so You're friends with a lot of very famous people. Sure. They, you know they have finstas. You know What's what I mean? That? Oh, fake insta. Fake insta. A burner account. Yeah, I don't, and I I am not a I very famous you. person. Yeah, you are. No, but I literally will low key, and that's why I should have learned my lesson from the LinkedIn because I'll just go in under my name and I'll just like. <laughs> yeah, but that's fun, and that's also yeah. you're like, what are you trying to? I'm not trying not to hide Emma. shit. Exactly. That's what I'm mm. saying. People love that about you. How's uh, married life? It's great. You re- What are you, almost in the first year? No, uh, not even. We uh, October, we did Halloween weekend. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, which was fun. And um, nobody wore costumes. I brought it up at one point, and she shot down very fast. Mm-hmm. But then she was also like, I got no problem if somebody does dress up. It's like, you know, but yeah. um, but it um, was in Arizona. It was great. It's great. We've known each other for, you know, five, six years. And uh easy transition now it's just kind of the you know getting on schedule of like making sure that when i'm gone like i've been since wednesday yeah that um and she's so support like she loves you so when i was like i'm gonna stay an extra day go to the game yesterday and then do the podcast she's like yeah. awesome cool see so, you know like and not you know and definitely distance makes a heart grow fonder and right so i think we both appreciate that and she comes on a lot of uh trips um because she's in voiceover animation casting yeah. so she can work from anywhere um, but then sometimes she's like, I need to be home and be with, you know, our, our pup and like yeah. be in my own bed. And like, yeah. I'm just not as, uh, accustomed to traveling and the wear and tear of everything as you are. So it's just easier for me to kind of be like just gone and also living out of a suitcase. There is nothing more annoying than when people ask me, does your, do your, does your husband come to every show? I'm like, no, this yeah. is fucking work. Yeah. If you think I want to deal with his ass backstage, yeah. who's not lifting a finger asking me what time dinner is. And if he can, he's like, I'll come backstage. I'm like, I ate the whole charcuterie. Like, well, I didn't oh mean to. And I'm like, God. there's nothing fucking left nothing for me. For you. I came off stage one time and he had one job, which was just to order me food. I was like, cause I can't really eat before shows. Me neither. So I'm literally performing. I go, Hey, you find the late night spot and just have it delivered to yes. the theater. Yes. And I come backstage and I'm like, hey, babe, where's dinner? And he's like, I wasn't very hungry. I'm like, it's not for you. (laughs) Like blacked out. But he's such a, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> lost my shit. And I was just like, I didn't ask if you were hungry. And I yeah. blacked out. And then Jeff now knows. He's like, have a bag of snacks. Like, it's just too much work for him yeah. when he comes to shows now. A snack bag or a yeah. snack pack or yeah. a backpack full of snacks. Like, you got to be prepped. And like, yeah, she's knows. She loves to come to the shows. Right. Because we live right in the middle of Hollywood. So it's like easy to go to a show and come back. And she also has gotten way, I mean, she's in the business because of being around me and what I was doing. She was peeing on some shows and, and, um, peed on, on Dan Levy's, um, a show uh, that he did. And, um, and so she just loves to be around it and she loves comedy and, and, uh, but, uh, but so I now have to be more cognizant when I get back to like, Spend not quality doing a show time. tonight and yeah. like not yeah. and immediately just go got a spot yeah which is also tough because then it's like you know it's there's so many people and you want to you got to stay in it and so um you know if i'm only in town for three days i don't want to not put in the bills for the comedy store because i they just pass like 12 new people so it's even more competitive and you just want to well you feel like you get in this crazy hamster wheel because i'm on the road right now i also feel like if i don't come back and then if i don't do two podcast episodes and then i'm not doing this yes. instagram and the brand deals so and the shitty. bullshit and then the script notes and this and that you feel like if you're not constantly moving if you take a day off you're like that's it yeah. everyone's forgotten about me it makes suck. you it sucks what makes you i guess our honeymoon was the first time i probably ever felt like i don't feel i'm just going to check out yeah. and like not and oh. I'm like, is that what I need? And I lost 15 fucking pounds. We were in Italy for 30 days and I lost 15 pounds because I wasn't stressed at all. Literally, I don't even know how it happened, but I just think my body finally for like the first time in three years, like relaxed. And I came back and never come back thinner. People were like, you've never looked better. Didn't lose the weight before the wedding, but literally lost 15 pounds on the Amalfi Coast doing nothing but blacking out on white wine at lunch, eating pizza and pasta because I finally gave myself a break. Maybe that's a secret, huh? That's why they're yeah. so fit and fun and just yeah. refreshed. And I think just regular actors, because they just know that they're like, okay, I'm on this season. I have nothing else to worry about. Comedy is if you are not up, if you are not in people's faces, yeah. like you said, if you're not dropping in, if you're not doing shit, if you're not booking shows, it is like a constant. Mm-hmm. I, I just kind of feel like I'm in a pinball machine sometimes. 1,000. Right. And I have to say, for people that don't know you, you are one of my favorite, all time favorite stand ups. Oh, I went to one of your shows. 
10 years ago yeah. when you were performing here in Atlanta. Because I, I remember I found you back in like the YouTube days, but you're so funny mm -hmm. and you're just so personable and you're just, every your, your crowd work is some of the best crowd work I've ever seen. That's really sweet. You are. And, and for people who don't know, I have begged Adam to play, I want you to play Jeff yes. in this TV show if it ever gets picked up. And it I'm will. saying this out loud and you're not supposed to do that. That's like the kiss of death, but I'm dying for you to play Jeff if we ever get the show picked to up. To not only do a show <laughs> with you and, and, and get to act with you and play anything uh, opposite you is a no-brainer, but let alone it be uh, a man that I've followed uh, through the socials and adore <laughs> Who's and just be insufferable. With anyway. Yeah, in the you know best where, way. Do you know where he is right now? Pinehurst. Yeah. He's with 16 boys just like hitting the links. Throw me in as the 17th. Yeah. I'm sure we'd have a great time. Great. All your, your, it's also so great how you've like added him to the rotation of just, you know, the behind the scenes of your life and the things like, like, Amanda, my wife will watch certain things when you're complaining about certain sports things. And yeah. It's all like she just sometimes I'm trying to tell her about like what's happening with a game going on. And I talk to her like she's a dude. And then yeah. she just starts laughing halfway through. And she goes, I'm sorry. This is just so fucking funny. You're like 10 years old and you're talking to me like I understand it. And she's like, but you're so cute and adorable because I you love it so much. I, I, <laughs> I literally grilled Jeff on this betting shit. Oh, we're good. We're good. It's fine. Um, you know, just tight wires everywhere. It's fine. Just cut Again, face going. <sighs> boomty production. <laughs> Welcome to Absolutely Not Productions, the most boomty, <laughs> boomty business in the biz. Um, my, I, I get so dialed in with my husband about this, like betting. I don't understand, like the DraftKings. I don't understand oh, yeah. the parlay. It's dangerous. It's dangerous, and it's not even that he's a big gambler. But I am now, like, they're so blatant with the ads. I just don't understand it. Mm. He's like, well, you know, if you're in the negative, that's actually the positive. You want to be a hundred, you know, hundred and fifty on the O line. I'm like, I don't know what any of this fucking means was never a scholastic kind of gal but now i'm just doubling down where it's being thrown in my face and i don't get it if i'm gonna gamble i just want to put in a fucking coin yeah and a britney spears slot machine and yeah. just wish her the best <laughs> right oh just wish her the fucking best i did this movie out here in atlanta this paul figa it's a john cena aquafina action comedy amazing out on i think i auditioned for it did not get a call back yeah fantastic keep going to get your own show <laughs> and, and britney's husband's in it and my sister Sam? called me and was freaking out because she was like she's like i haven't been to any premiere uh or anything and i was like yeah but i've given you guys lots of money yeah uh, so um <laughs> let's take it easy and uh no i turfed your backyard and, <laughs> and uh, turf is yeah. fucking expensive people oh, yeah. do not realize fake grass is a fucking bamboozlement it uh surprised me how yeah and but i just was like my nieces and nephew are not growing up without a backyard they can play in. And have they played in it since? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> um, but so uh, indoor kitty cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so she goes, I'm going to this premiere because I got to meet this guy because there's a chance Brittany will be there. But I didn't meet him. Our scenes weren't together. But, um, you know, I followed him on the gram and, and he's an interesting follow. And uh, maybe I'll see him at a, at a premiere. Sam, you know, sh shout out. Shout to out to Sam. Sam. Shout out to you for, uh, for, for, you know, for locking down one of the most uh, prestigious pop stars of our generation or lifetime and if you want to meet us at the cheesecake factory anytime soon Please. we would love to take Brittany yeah. for lunch just do a quick wellness check-in you know what i mean well let's see we could all factory is a great spot for a wellness check -in. great spot because no the menu is, there. there's so much on the menu too it's yeah. like whatever kind of mood you, you come in yes it does keep you occupied it, occupied it's it's a great conversation starter yeah. and there's something for everybody's mood the you know what i mean dropping i've heard at a cheesecake factory bar would blow your mind i'm gonna give you a real quick one yeah a buddy of mine was scared a divorce and he goes, Will you meet me at the Cheesecake Factory at the Grove? I go, Are you trying to make this the most sad Sunday of all time? <laughs> I go, But yes, I'll meet you there. I don't want to listen. I want you to vent. And we're sitting there and we hear these two guys clinking glasses of beers and they, mid to late 40s, they were reminiscing, reconnecting and just, you know, pulling up all the old tales. And, uh, and it was like maybe Trevor and Travis, let's say. And one of the guys goes, <clears throat> he goes All right, man. So, before we uh, catch up and hey, and we'll talk about Tina and all that. I'm sorry, but you know, I, you know, I didn't like her. But all right. <laughs> For $10 million, dude, verbatim, would you fuck a dead body? <laughs> and so I'm sitting there, and I love it. Over, over cheeseburger egg rolls. Over cheeseburger 100%. egg rolls. 100%. And teriyaki chicken salads. Yeah. And uh -huh. I'm like, I love a good eavesdrop, but also I love a good eavesdrop when the people are speaking at an audible level where they're like, they want you to hear. These, mm -hmm. these guys wanted us to, 
you know what I'm saying? Like, I was once at a urinal and a guy was like, man, is it me or are these urinals really big? And I, like, remember actually saying out loud, like, ah, I'm sure you got a fine penis, man. And, and I was like, oh, you lured me into that. You made me compliment your dick by setting me up with an alley-oop that I, I wasn't even now on Now I'm court. 100% I, identify as a homosexual. I did not plan on it, but you set me up, and I dove right into that. It would have been weirder if I didn't say anything. So yeah. I was like, just say something back. And then yeah. I said that. So for $10 million, would you fuck a dead body? To which his buddy goes, was it a guy or a girl? Jesus Christ. Like, Let me get another round of hot <laughs> burger egg, egg rolls. And an Oreo cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation's getting cheesy. You have the face, though, that I feel like a lot of people tell you shit. Let me tell you, I've been in so many chilies to goes at the airport, sitting at the bar somewhere in Cleveland, Ohio, waiting on a layover, and people will come up to me and just tell me the craziest shit. Not that they know who I am. I just have that face where people will tell me their deepest, darkest secrets. Wow. Like where the body is buried, how they cheated on their spouse. And I'm like, I got to catch my flight, but... You know, and I end up buying them drinks. I don't know what it is, but people tell me the craziest shit. You're a people person, right? I am, Start yeah. Start to finish. Mm-hmm. From, from the get-go? Yeah, straight like, up. Because you're, and your fans know this, and your family knows this, and your friends know this, you have an effortlessness, uh, we'll Google that if that's real word <laughs> or not. You're really being so sweet, Adam. I, I should no, be blowing so, your spot no, up right you're now. You're so, so kind. You're so personable and likable, which is why all the good things come to you, and- and that's and this is why people do want to open up to you. So I want to know, as young Heather, uh-huh. like fifth, sixth grade Heather, yeah, were you always? Because I feel like you and I are have a lot of similar qualities and traits as far as like, you know, just the kind of the way we were even at that stage where it's like I was trying to not be full class clown, but make people laugh. Always yeah. want to make people feel good. But was yeah. even personal with parents. I was good with parents. I, I was always a kid who wanted to hang out with the, with the parents. Wow. And, and then my friends would get upset and they're like, do you not want to play with me? I'm like, honestly, your fucking stepmom has a lot more good <laughs> shit to say. I, I always threw the she parties. She told me about the cul-de-sac uh, <laughs> drama, which, you know, apparently you don't ask the right questions because Pam is gay. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Pam's giving me low-key cigs on the side and let me have two Zimas. You brought so- some candy cigarettes from 7-Eleven, which you stole saw you on the security cam because my dad's friends with the guy who runs the ampm slash 7-eleven yeah i was always cool with the parents like i enjoyed hanging i was like a little adult as a kid but i i mean of course i was always throwing the parties personable kid and i'm sure you were the same way yeah. but i loved hanging out with, it, with and especially if you had a stepmom oh the fucking stepmoms were my jam wow. you know because i wanted to figure out what the layers were amongst the family dynamics yeah. i wanted to therapize everybody wow. you know what i mean like well melissa maybe if you were kinder to your stepmom and you made her feel like she was welcome into the family she wouldn't be such a bitch to at soccer practice oh my god it was honestly probably very toxic this was at what age uh, like probably six or seven That's yeah bonk. so when yeah. i was eight and my folks split thanks for bringing it up i'm sorry about that were, they no it was great i'm uh-huh. glad it, i'm glad it happened i am who i am because of my mom and uh and I, my sister and my mom though were at each other's throats yeah and i i think probably i was never a shit kid but i i i locked it in and became more on top of of um, just school and not trying to be a problem because of how much um, uh, trouble my sister was getting into and creating for my mom. Are you the oldest or youngest? Uh, she's two years older than me. Okay, baby. Yep. Yeah. And so yep. they split. My sister's, what, 10? I'm eight. Mm-hmm. And so they're each other's throats. She's, you know, maybe skipping class. And and um, and and, uh, and and as she got a little older, you know, just staying out late and not doing, like, crazy drugs, but just hang with bad people and, and whatever. Now Pushing she's your mom's it. limits. Pushing mom's yeah. limits. And so I would, like, it's an oldest thing. clean the house. And when my mom came home, she didn't have to worry about that or or um or uh you know feed myself two helpings of spaghetti and meatballs so she didn't have to cook yeah you know uh, which by the way one time uh, I was walking with a plate of spaghetti and meatballs down the stairs and I was rushing because the Disney afternoon was starting. <laughs> and I tripped and fucking yeah. face planted down a very narrow staircase into the door. <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs, I like pushed it up against the door so it's just meatballs sliding down the fucking doorknob. I think I cried harder at that than when my dad said he wasn't coming back. Yeah. And so... Uh, well, also, were you a chubby kid? Because... Oh, yeah. And I hear, oh, we go, Dale Spin. So I'm missing the start. And I'm, like, seeing meatballs. I'm trying to grab them off the door and, like, see which ones I can salvage. And my mom's like, just leave it. <laughs> just leave it. Yeah. That's the way it was with TGI Friday. Like, if I knew Step by Step was coming on, then uh, yeah. what was after that? It was, yeah, like, yeah. Family, well, matters, family Matters. Family Matters. Full House. Full House. Like, that's when I would... Hanging with Mr. Cooper. I yeah. would... Oh, hanging with Mr. Cooper was the fucking best. I would black out. 
out. Oh, it was yeah. It was one of my first uh, jokes where I said I was the first one of the four. Uh, being a fat kid wasn't all that bad. I was the first one in the fourth grade to get a set of tits. And now I was talking about how I just went with my t-shirt on, because not because I was uh, embarrassed. I didn't want to make the girls jealous with what I was working with. And they were all so curious at that age, like, oh my god, Adam, how did you get those sweet ass titties? Yeah. Every girl at that age is concerned with like who's developed, who's developing, yeah. where'd you get them, how'd you get them? And I go, listen closely, Kimberly. I got two words for you: pop tart appetizer. <laughs> and she's like, that's three words. And I go, you want these tits or not, bitch? You know. I'm like jalapeno popper appetizer. <laughs> I didn't get tits so till like June senior year, almost junior Whoa. year. And all of a sudden, and I'll never forget, we wore uniforms at my school, you know, humble brag. And um, next thing you know, I just remember this kid, Matt Fredrickson, and he turned around and it was just like my my button down had popped. And it was like first day of senior year. And he was just That's like, big Heather big. got tits over the summer. And I remember, Jesus and I was very confident Jeff. kid. Yeah. And I just remember being like, fuck you, Matt. And I was like, oh, Matt. yeah. And then I had to go to Victoria's Secret that day after school with my mom because I had to get new bra. It was like all like for me, it happened overnight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Is that normal in the human body I don't know I don't know I also had a gross spurt like I was a short chubby round like salt of the earth like just you know what I mean compact yeah. dense kid yeah. and then all of a sudden I shot up and got titties and now they're, they're long titties now you know what I mean they, they, they've they now found their spot so but some for everybody else. something there. for everybody I'll tell you what the, yeah the what you peer mediating or, or just like handling people's problems at that age is like uh such a there's such few kids that have like even the wherewithal to want to try to like I don't know bridge you said it was between who that you would do it with like when like if there was ever a family turmoil with anybody I would always be like I, I would want to sit down family. yeah with my friend's family oh yeah I would want to help the family dynamics because I'm like close with the stepmom you know what I mean wow. because at the barbecues I'd be hanging out drinking Zimas <laughs> like the seventh grade with the stepmom I just don't know I, I so don't would you know. have a talk show would you ever want to have a talk show where you did like not Dr. Phil stuff, but like lighter. Because I wouldn't want you to be like, you know, look at look me in the face right now. <laughs> you did okay. the best Dr. Phil ever. Well, 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 let me finish, Heather, because you had me on your show to talk about real life. But right now we're talking about <laughs> fantasy shit. There's a difference between Harry Potter and Harry Pussies. And I think yeah. when you wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and the alarm gets gives off a warning and you think you're going to make it on time, but by the time I grab my books and I give myself a look, I'm at the corner <laughs> just in time to see the bus fly by. It's all right because I was saved by the bell. But if give me one reason why you're not a loser, and I'll give you ten reasons why everyone in your family wishes you were dead. We'll be right back. <laughs> and then he cuts the commercial because he knows it's good TV, and he chops people down. Phil, you know what you do. You know what you do. I'm obsessed with the um, whoever's running Maury Povich's Instagram account. He's like 84. But you need to go we back. We still got him. Yeah, we still got him. Povich is in the, uh, the, bat, the boat of like Bob Barker, who, by the way, just looked up because we, we had a Bob Barker. Is he alive? He's 99. He's so still with us. Povich and Barker. Don't Crushing go anywhere. It. Don't go anywhere. Like, just absolutely icons. Whoever is running Mari's Instagram account, what is it? they're starting to put up, like, old videos. What I was obsessed with with Mari is when he would get people that had, like, these deep, like, fears of, like, a, a jar of olives or cotton balls. And then he would come out and he's like, you know, like, just like, Tanya, why do you hate olives so much? And these women would be like, I just hate olives. And the next thing you know, he would have, like, two interns come around the corner with just trays filled with olives. And these women would, like, lose their shit, be seizing on the ground. And they started to Posties on his TikTok account and his social media account. It is the greatest. It's so up. fucked up. It, it brings me so much joy. Oh I don't know God. what it is, but it's just these like innate fears that people have yes. and how he would just, he did nothing to help them. He just threw whatever he, they were so fearful of <laughs> on them. them. What terrifies you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Rabbits who can tap dance? Yeah. Well, say hello to <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. You know, like, it, it, I also it was love so torturous. The Strange Addiction uh, on A&E. Ever see that? One of the like, greatest shows of all time. These guys are like, you know, from, from Des Moines in Iowa, my name's Daryl, and I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I wake up, I brush my feet. You know, I you know, I look under the couch for treasures. You know, and then I fuck my Corvette. And I fuck my Corvette and eat a bar of soap, and that's my morning. The guy who made love. It was a guy who made love to his red Corvette, and I was like, this is bizarre. How about the lady who would eat the couch cushions? Oh yeah, she was addicted to the couch cushions. Where is she? Where's the VH? Where is she? Where are they now? Yeah, couch is cushion she eater? good? Is she good? Do you remember? Is she good? Is she good? Is she all right? Is she good? <laughs> is she good? Now, this is fucked up. Because great show. Great show. Is she good? You is she good? You dig up people that have, we've seen glimpses of that have done some 
fucked up shit and just taking on is she, is she good, good? <laughs> oh i don't know God. about carol but i want to know is she good she used to eat couch cushion covers but you know what it's we been 20 years to her house <laughs> <laughs> to figure out is she oh good my God. that's great is she good that's a great tv show we should pitch yeah. because the writers are on strike right now so i don't know how much oh, like we could go non-scripted yeah. and just do a show where we find people who weren't good yeah. and find out if is she good yeah and it's only women and so that way we can sell it to a network to be like female empowerment. Totally. It also could yeah. be like maybe like there was a bachelor party at, at my um, show this weekend and one of them and and a lot. She of, wasn't good. We already she, know that. She was pretty black out. <laughs> she tried to come up on stage at one point and almost mm. face planted, which, you know, yeah. would have been the end of my time in, in Atlanta uh, for shows. Yeah. And she um, <laughs> she I'm talking to her and she goes, uh, I go, where's your guy right now? And she's like, oh, he's at home in Chattanooga. And like, what does he do? He was a professor and like. And, uh, and I go, what is he uh, professing? Like, what does he push yeah. the public, uh, fact-wise? And she goes, oh, he, uh, he does genocide. And then Squeeze me? And then she pauses, and everybody starts laughing. And then I just kind of, excuse me, pause and go, good night, everybody. <laughs> and then I go, that is, welcome back to, uh, what the fuck did you just say? And then she, I can't even remember at this point what she, I was like, did you mean Sega Genesis? Like, I'm trying to think yeah. what, like Genesis? Like, what word did you mean to say? And then she, I think studying... Oh, studying like the Holocaust is what she, or yeah. Like so the history of gen, yes. like yeah, a historical what, genocide. So then I go, well, just say that. Just say that. Also, maybe just say history. Yeah. Just be like, you know, just a professor of bad shit that had gone down. So then I go, can we call your dude? So she tried to bring the phone up and then she almost tripped. Here's one thing that was interesting that I want to get your take on. Yeah. And I'm sure the uh, listeners will appreciate because I've never really uh, taken a, a step back to think about this. When you meet your uh, pal's significant other and then you find out they're getting locked down, I think most of us, even if you have some trepidations about them, you just kind of push those to the side right. for the happiness and the uh, and the pursuit of happiness for your uh, for your pal. But as this girl at one point goes to the bathroom, there's five of the friends. One had gone with her to the bathroom and uh, there were five left at the table. And I go, guys, do we like the guy? Mm -hmm. And they all just sat in silence. And I go, <laughs> I'll take your silence as a definitely not. And then one of them Is she laughing. good? Is she good? <laughs> is she good? And then they all kind of started laughing. And I go, oh, this is bad. I go, don't worry, I'm not going to say anything. I go, but what the fuck? And then I go, why? And then one of them, they all, they all started, started to say silent. Because he's a professor of genocide. <laughs> yeah, don't know how to say, yeah. Topic. And, uh. But I, so anyway, I, it, it was, it was, I guess, baffling to see how quickly they were, but just couldn't hide it. Yeah. And I was like, does the guy have to suck that bad for the girls to not be able to, to be put on a happy face of, of yeah. pretending or are girls just like, Hey man, like, I'm not like we're supporting her, but like, I'm not going to probably, he's not going to be one of my emergency contacts. Can I tell you, I think, and this is not to shit on the girls, but I was actually at one of my dear friend's weddings. I was at the wedding the night before we all convinced her not to marry this guy. He was terrible. The next morning she was like, I'm calling off the wedding. Like we were waiting. This was like years coming. And then she still ended up going through with the wedding. So I think no. other women, as much as we want to champion each other and be like, get rid of Mark, he's a piece of shit. We know that it can be cyclical. And it's like you, the, the woman has to make the decision on her own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it can get very toxic sometimes. You're like, we can say what we want to say, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm, I really thought I had, had my friend convinced not to, and of course she's not with the guy anymore. But at one point I was like, yep, she still went and married him. So, you know, it's like you, you damned if you do damned if you don't in some situations. Yeah. 1000 is the Southern, um, charm, uh, for, uh, like, I think they were all, she said Chattanooga, I guess, which is where that's. No, Tennessee. no, no. They're actually talking about like Bravo Southern Charm people. Yeah. No, those, that's Charleston. Oh, people gosh. from Chattanooga are interesting, though. There's a really fancy country club called Lookout Mountain. And it's like a, Whoa. it's just this mountain in Chattanooga and these people from Chattanooga who are Lookout Mountain people think this is the greatest place on earth. And it's beautiful. Mm. You want to look out. It's great. It's wealthy. But there's something, there's a very niche group of people from Chattanooga and they got to get out of Chattanooga some days. Do you like those? Um, I just, when I got to be a bartender on Watch What Happens, uh, which you just went on. Yes. So How great. was your experience? We need well, to talk cool. about that. 
I, yeah. I mean, I wasn't. It would have been cool if I was maybe sitting down. I was glad to even be on because I because um, that show so uh, fun, so iconic. Yeah, um, but it's so fast. It's shot so fast. So fast. You just get peppered with questions. Yeah. And of course, I was prepped, but I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, it was just they're asking you, you know, to name fifty five fucking housewives. Even though I'm a huge housewife fan, you are. I f- I was I felt like I had done angel dust. Like I did not know what happened. And then I'm just looking at Andy Cohen at the commercial break. Like, does he like me? Does he like me? Did he laugh? Oh yeah. You know. And then he's kind of a petite guy. Totally. Very handsome, but yeah. petite and. I, He's just running an he's empire. He's locked in, and he's yeah. kind of on a, not autopilot, but he's just kind of like, it's you know, it's yeah. it's a little bit Groundhog Day, I'm sure, with that show. Where yeah, it's like, we're doing this, we're doing this. I'm asking the questions. Here's what it is. It's like a 30 minute taping. Yeah, but there were two guys on the show from Winter House. Is that a thing? Yeah, Winter House is a thing. Uh huh. I didn't even know that was a show, and I was like, and then I uh, saw some clips they posted, and then I looked up some stuff mm-hmm. later. I'm like. Wow, so it's just called it's just called like Snowy Fuck Cabin is basically <laughs> another title we could have gone with, right? It's literally a bunch of people in like Aspen just fucking in. We'll in, never in, have a shortage yeah. of like find a spot. Yeah. In a place we haven't Rancho seen. Cucamonga House. It could be anything. It could. Li- My dream is to be like a real housewife of Rancho Cucamonga. I've never even been there. I've driven through it once, but I just feel like that would be a vibe. You know what I mean? Like well, how Temecula you Mommies. Yeah, Temecula Mommies. Pate- Pachanga. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How'd you get into comedy? Um. Let's see. When I such an open-ended question. No. Let's start from the beginning. No, I'll get well. So, so being a, a bigger kid, when I would get teased, <laughs> I would. Period. That's all you need to say. Yeah. That's would be last me. They're like, "How'd you get a comedy?" I go, "Well, I was a fat child." Yes. Done. And guess what? And I, I had always. It wasn't like funny around the house with my mom and sis and and family. But when I was at school, I would like. Well, I would prank call radio Seattle sports radio stations, record it on my My First Sony, Hell yeah. on the bus, and show my buddies, and they would laugh. Mm-hmm. Then I would like memorize Ace Ventura full on monologues, perform them on the bus, mm-hmm. and make kids laugh. Yep, just because it was like it, I the feeling of making people laugh was cool. And then in sixth grade, when I started to really kind of you know make people, I mean, you know, prank call. There was a girl that that everybody had a crush on that was new to school. She wanted nothing to do with me because she was like, "You got bigger tits than me." <laughs> and then my um, my buddy, uh, she had a crush on him, and so I could do her voice really well. So we would prank call him as her oh. diabolical fourth grade. But I wouldn't do anything crazy. I wasn't like come over, uh, sit next to me on the bus, and put your finger inside. Like it yeah. was more like sit next to me at school and do whatever. Yeah. And um and so and making buddies laugh doing that. And then I was like the funny kid and not the fat kid. So I chased that because I was like. Oh, they're not looking at me as, as you know, as something different and and a, an object to tease. It was more like celebrating, right? And it made it was like mutually beneficial. It was like I feel good uh, being silly, and I'm making you guys laugh. And then it was, uh, and then I just kept doing it. It's like it's such a weird thing too to that you're getting reps of doing that as a like all that time that we did that, you know, um, you know, bleeds into what we're doing now. And I definitely have friends that I, I think um, uh, when people say like, oh, I have friends that are funnier than me. I got a couple friends that are very funny and yeah. very quick and sharp. But at the end of the day, you're like, some people, we're just born to do this. Yeah. You know, like my best uh, friend, Adam French and best man is so funny. Doesn't just like, isn't just a, a wall for me to bounce off of. Throws it back funnier a lot of the times. But he's a good riffer, but I make him laugh a lot. He makes me laugh a lot. But there's no part of him that ever... Want to get up on perform. stage. Yeah. Because it's an unhinged thing to do. There are days where I'm about to walk out on stage and I literally think to myself, I'm like alone in my thoughts. I'm like, this is the most diabolical idea. Like I have to be a full-blown sociopath totally. that I want to go out in front of all of these strangers and just try and make them laugh. Yes. And I'll sometimes turn to like, you know, Tina or anybody backstage. I'm like, I don't, this is unhinged. Why yeah, am I doing this? And it's the greatest joy of my life. I could never do anything else being, but here's the thing. Your sense of humor is so smart and so sharp. And I encourage everybody to follow Adam and watch all of your clips, but you're so joyful too. And I think that's why I'm attracted to your comedy. It's very joyful. Like you giggle at your own shit and I do the same shit. Yeah. I'm like, I just want to fucking giggle yeah it doesn't have to be, be silly i want to be silly yeah like life is already too fucking layered yeah. and and harsh you know i just want to be silly i know i get into moments where i start to maybe talk about the and i'm you know trying to dig deeper with some family stuff but mm-hmm. like i don't and at least like right now 16 years in i'm like this is i still want to be really silly and whatever and if even if i do tackle some topics that are a little more you know, um you know rooted in some more um you know uh seriousness that i Still make it silly, but I don't. I don't like to talk about anything too heavy. Even though I have those opinions on things, yeah. Like I do a joke about 
arming the teachers right now and how fucking bonkers that is. And I'm talking about we should arm the janitors, talk about guys who got nothing to lose. They got keys every situation. They're fucking like, you know, they're looking for danger. And then I'm, and then I go, I can feel some pushback. All right, well, there's got to be some group we can f- figure out that can arm uh, or can protect the kiddos properly. I'm thinking out loud, but stay with me. Maybe arm the pedophiles. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Nobody cares about kids more. You know, I go, I'm not running for office. Fucking, I, again, you're pushing back. Adam, that sounds expensive. You know, and then whatever. So it's like still trying to make light of that, even though I clearly have like opinions about that you know yeah well listen everything is rooted in something dark i mean my last my first big door and like my last one was all about my dad dying but it was like in the most joyful way i was like this shit's so fucked up but it made me giggle so hard now that i've worked through it like every all of that stems from something but you still have just such a you can say shit that's fucked up and say stuff that's rooted in something that's like heavy but you have such a joyful delivery about it and that's i just find that so refreshing yeah i don't with crowd work especially too i and, and, you know, and you can attest to this because it's, I don't want to make people feel bad. Um, the, um, uh, not to name drop, but The Rock told me, mm-hmm. uh, who I've become buzzed with from being on a show, yeah. uh-huh. whatever. Um, crazy, by the way. I posted a thing when Gwyneth Paltrow came out with her vagina candles and said, and it was right when COVID starts. So I was like, I got to post more shit. So right. I posted a picture of it and I tagged him and said, we need to get your dick and ball candles going. <laughs> Just, I mean, it was high, and I was just like, wait, 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 tag the rock. Then he follows me back in comments, and I was like, I keep dipping my balls in the wax, brother. Funny stuff, keep it up. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, my God. You know, and then immediately I'm like, do my podcast. Yeah. And he was like, block. No. Yeah. And, then, and so then, and we, whatever, and then got on the show, and, but he goes, he's a big crowd work guy, and he would talk about, too, in wrestling. He's like, that was my favorite uh, thing to do was play off the crowd. Yeah. And so he has a, a giant, uh, um, you know, uh, affection for, that part of what we get to do and just getting to read the room and play off the audience. And yeah. he goes, and I remember thinking about this, but he goes, he goes, I love that you're not trying to make people feel bad. He goes, oh, he goes, you're hitting them and you're hugging them, mm-hmm. which I guess is now a phrase I use to describe it because I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, he's like, he's like, dude, you gotta hit people. You gotta, everyone's gotta be fucked with. We mm-hmm. gotta fuck with people. But like you hug them at the end and you, he's like, you were talking about some guy with some fucked up voice and you were doing something. And then you kind of like spun it around. was like, you should do VO for these commercials. And then you kind of made up these commercials and he did it. But then you kind of like slammed him a little bit more and then kind of whatever. And that's, I do that. Cause that's like my personality, but also it's more engaging and somewhat more challenging than to just you know, to keep the audience on your side too. Yeah. It's like, and look, if somebody is like, there was a, a couple gals in one of the shows this weekend that were pretty uh, fucked up and being a little obnoxious, but I kept trying to kill it with kindness. Yeah. Including- and then eventually I just say, yeah. shut up, you dumb cunt. There's at least one time <laughs> during the show. Well, always. Uh, I, I just say, I can say button. it maybe, you know, but I always just say, shut up, you dumb cunt. Yeah. And then the audience goes wild because they know it's the one woman who thinks that she owns you. She's like, you're my best friend because I hear you in my brain or whatever. She and she, j- you but, no, but it, I, yeah, it may be love, but they just don't have a sense of like, sometimes you gotta tell, a, you just gotta be like, yeah. just shut up, you dumb cunt. That's part of the you know? job of also like, protecting the show where you're yeah like, especially you doing all these theaters like you got more people that you can't see and just hearing so it's like you know uh so if you if there's someone that is distracting for the show and people yeah. are like doing the sure the turning around you might not be able to see or hear that because you're fucking pounding away so it's like it, when you do hear it you got to kind of quickly assess like is this person being a lot cool do i need to shut them down right. do I need to go like because i don't want because you don't want to hear about after where everyone's like, oh, we had a great time, but you know, we were in the, you know, close in the back, and this woman wouldn't shut the fuck up, and they didn't kick her, you know. So then I get it all the time where people come to like the meet and greet after, and like we had a, such a great time, but this this row of women just oh. would everything I would say, they'd want to have a conversation about it, also which is, sucks that they bring that up to you because you're like, yeah. Hey, and then I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Let's yeah. do a PSA that everybody just needs to come to shows and like enjoy it. And I've never understood, and maybe it's because we're sober when we perform, or like you know, you have a glass of wine or whatever. Sure. But it's like I would never pay money to go see something and then just black out so I don't remember it. Yeah, like, maybe cats maybe cats one <laughs> lay miz fucked up maybe on pcp you know what i mean that's heavy you Cirque know the soleil the beatles love show i was yeah. on maybe mushrooms six brownies yeah, mushrooms. yeah 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 if you weren't doing comedy what do you think you would do oh man probably be an elementary school teacher really yeah what what subject um well don't i mean the subjects are kind of Oh, you can do everything in elementary math recess. I just asked my uh, buddy's kid. My buddy out here has got two kids. Adorable. Mm -hmm. Filthiest mouths I've ever heard. How old are they? I think seven and nine. Okay. Motherfucking fuck. Motherfucking ass. Fuck a bitch. (laughs) Fuck a fuck a bitch. Fuck a fuck a fuck a. Like this, the kid, the, the son, especially just, and then he kept going, Hey, 
knock, knock. I go, who's there? He goes, mom fucker. And I go, mom fucker who? He goes, gotcha. <laughs> And then you just you just shut down, yeah. and, I, and I you're like, I go, I go, but I go, I go, hey man, you get two more swears. I go, it's actually not that cool to swear. I go, yeah. I go, and he goes, but you do it. I go, yeah, but I'm an adult and mm-hmm. I got issues and I'm 40 and like, <laughs> I got you know, you're, you're just a kid and like it's not cool. Like you're gonna get in trouble. And he goes, but you do it. I go, yeah. Again, using me as a barometer for choices is yeah. probably like I, you know, is when I that's why when I played Wolverine at Universal Studios, I, I uh, would have these kids looking up at me, being like. Like, you're my hero. And I would forget that I was wearing the Wolverine suit because I was just coming off, like, you know, some two-day bender and, like, you know, got sugar-free Red Bull and Tylenol PM. Wait, you're doing bubbling. Wolverine in the park? At the, in the park. W- why have we not... Okay, Wolverine as job, a park. When yep. I graduated college. Fuck yeah, it is. And these kids are like, you know, what's Wolverine's favorite food? And I'm like, potato salad. Fuck off, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know I'm not the real guy. <laughs> but they would like say, and this one kid, it was like day three of working there, this little kid from uh, Israel. And he was like- We came all the way from Israel, no, God bless People him. from all over, which is right. so funny. And he's like, my name is Ishmael. And I'm like, I'm Adam. I mean, Wolverine. Yeah. I, I just forget I'm wearing the suit. And then he was just like looking up at me with so much admiration and- uh and in my head, I just want to be like, dude, I got high and stole bread from Ralph's last night. Like, <laughs> pick, go talk to Spider-Man. He just graduated law school. You know, that guy's got actual goals. I ran over a kid's foot one day. This was uh, week two. We had these ATVs, and we would parade around the park. Myself, Captain America, Storm, Green yeah. Goblin, Spider-Man. And we would parade around the park, and this kid runs up to take a picture. And uh, and everyone, I was holding up the caboose, and everyone's you know driving away. So I was like, "Hey, hurry up, bub!" And so he takes a picture, and I thought he like just ran away. So I like revved over, and I feel the tire just go up and over something, and I go, "Oh shit!" And I turn back, and the kid goes, hey. <laughs> "I was like, shit, I ran over his fucking foot." So you keep I'm, going, right? You don't stop. Well, so now I'm just I sat there like turning back, and I'm thinking of like what I should say to him to right. kind of like calm the situation. So I think should I say like, "Hang in there, bub," or "My bad," or "I'm Wolverine." I couldn't think of what to say. So I said nothing, and then I just fucking turned because they were like, "Come on!" So I just drove away, and I told my buddy we get back in the break room. He played Shrek, and uh, and I go, job I could absolutely do. I could do Shrek. I could do Shrek. Easy. Like, that yeah. costume was so hot. I saw a guy as Shrek and SpongeBob get into a real fight once. Everybody <laughs> thought it was like, scripted. It was awesome. So so I look. So I tell my buddy, I go, "Yeah, dude, I couldn't think of what to say," and I just like drove away. So he goes, "Let me recap this." You as Wolverine ran over a kid's foot, mm-hmm. stared him down, and then drove away. And I was yeah. like, well, when you put it like that, yeah, it sounds pretty bad. And uh, our boss over, uh, overheard and uh, pulled me into her office and already needed to talk to me because she was like, you know, um, we're going to give you uh, some time to, to take some time off because um, we noticed you're not in full Wolverine physique at this time stop so you I, were out you were too out of shape body shamed you were body shamed theme park superhero. <laughs> i go jenna i'll say her real name she was a failed disney princess and she was taking it out on me and uh she because you know she was told she was too fat to be cinderella every fucking weekend thousand percent uh, and, thousand percent and fine and i'm yeah. sorry that you went through that yeah we're and sorry was, jenna we really was, are and maybe I how's she doing you know, how she, she, is she good? Is she good? Is she good? <laughs> Jenna, are you good? Yeah. She like, she just was taken out of me for sure. And look, the number one Wolverine, I think I was number three, third string Wolverine. This guy named Mark Miller was fucking jacked. He'd wear Wolverine t-shirts under his leather jacket when he would come in with his motorcycle helmet. The guy was Wolverine. He was. And so, yeah, that guy fucking owned a Bowflex. He did sit-ups. <laughs> he Bowflex. Did. We had all of it. We had the Bowflex. The Bowflex. We had the, the oh, um, the fucking the squeaky. Rower, the yeah, squeaky we, had, we, had all, we had all of it. Yeah, fucking. But I, was a, I did go through a period where I was a jacked kid because. For real. Yeah, I mean, I was still chubby. I've always had like a, like a tight layer, but we did get a Bowflex in our house and I remember I there was a little bit of you know that's why I got thick traps if you notice I got the thickest traps you've ever seen on wow, a woman like I can fly I was doing a lot of pull downs in like the eighth grade prepping for cheerleading oh yeah I like became addicted to the Bowflex dead on with the cheerleading like yeah. big time what was your sport? Were you a big baseball guy? Because you were obsessed baseball, with baseball. Football, and yeah. then I quit football to play Danny Zuko in Greece my sophomore year of high school. These are just such iconic. Essay. These are iconic things. Of course you played Danny Zuko. Yeah. yeah. And it was like the plays were such a big deal uh, in our community. Yeah. At Shortcrest High School. In elementary school, you would take field trips to the high school to see the play. Because it was a fucking big ass deal, and I would yeah, always same, look same up. with us. Uh-huh. It was not such a cool. I remember like you'd go out to the lobby and meet all of them because everybody would come out. And as you would do the, it was always the spring shows or maybe the fall too. And then you would do these kid shows during the week where you got to be off from school for a week because you did two performances right. for all these schools around the uh, the city. And I remember going out to the lobby, everyone's in character and costume still and like talking to them. And it was so 
fucking cool. So now I'm at the high school, and freshman year I got to play football and do Nancy Drew, girl detective. I was the bad guy at the same time. The football coach in freshman year and the play, they worked it out to where it was like, you can skip some practices and do this when we're in tech, and then you can... Wait, this brings me so much joy in my heart that you were an athlete, but still also that you had went well, to a school cap, yeah. where like it, theater was cool, because I did that. I totally. played golf, I did cheerleading, and then I was state competition one-act play. Wow. Like, I was a theater kid. Wow, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's probably why... A back rubs. They, a lot of, oh, so many massages <laughs> trains way too many massage way trains too many and you know who you are when you weren't like doing it for orthopedic medical purposes yeah like yeah i don't know there's always a steve or a randall mm -hmm. that tyler was there's tyler. always a tyler who just went a little too far down I'm the too back far down the back yeah it was doing too much like this like we just wanted this but he was like yeah. doing, like he was like introducing <laughs> new moves being like you know i was i've actually been thinking about taking massage therapy class cool tyler <laughs> We just asked you what you wanted for lunch. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, um, so I love I, that you did sports and theater. Okay, yeah, continue. They quit football because they couldn't make it work sophomore year. And then the director for the play was like, hey, uh, we're doing Grease in the fall. And I, you know, the the bad guy, Nancy Drew, was like a supporting character. Uh huh. And so now it's sophomore year. And we had a great crop of like of actors and, and singers for about three years. So it was really awesome. And it was so fun. And so uh, he's like, "You, I want to make sure you're auditioning for Danny because – not saying you're going to get it, but I think you'd be, you should audition. And so I go back and forth all that summer. I was going to start offensive line as a sophomore on varsity because the kid ahead of me got injured and my coach made me sophomore captain. And football was just like a whatever thing to me. Like my uncle played in college. Yeah. But basketball is my main sport. And, uh, you know, uh, by the way, not a lot of Jews in football. It's like, you know, we're more Weinstein with the tackle, you know. And so my, uh, my mom goes, well, what do you want to do? And I go, well, I want to do the play, I feel like I'd be playing football to please a coach. And she goes, well, there you go. And she You're goes, like, I want to be the greatest showman. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and forth trying to, every day I'd go to, you know, summer workouts and come back. She's like, did you tell him? And I was like, no, no. I fucking panicked and, and, and pussied out. And so then finally one day I did, and he just goes, get the fuck out of my office. I try <gasps> to make a joke. I go, hey, I got can't memorize the playbook this year because I think I'm going to memorize the words that grease lightning in. And he was like... Go kill yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he ended up coming with his kids on the matinee, and I'm in there in full makeup and leather jacket at the end, and I got Sandy, you know, lipstick. And he's like, look at this queer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, but then he just goes, well, you didn't suck. And I was like, thanks, coach. What? I gave up on sports. Like, I was a hardcore soccer gal, but I just, like, I as I got older, I realized how much slower I was getting. Like, mm -hmm. it started as, like, you know, center forward, then midfielder, then back. Then eventually I was goalie by, like, JV, and I because I was wow. just tired. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, the I, I was very observant as like a teen so I knew the kids that were going to go and yes. play this full time yes. and I knew that I did not have a chance of playing any sport professionally but I was like I know that the theater will always take me where I need to be oh you know God. good for you yeah. to like recognize that yeah and sports and theater like they're synonymous as far as like the collaboration aspect and just like being a part of a building something from the ground up and yeah. teamwork and all that oh, the other kid the by the way that I just remembered that was up for Danny Zuko the, the only other kid that auditioned um, cause we had, so we had a good crop of kids and there was, that was like 15 to 20 that was in every show for about three, four years. And yeah. then a few outsiders every now and then that would audition on a whim. And this kid named Danny Park. Was he like a redhead or something? No, or like Danny Park was Chinese. <laughs> so it was me and Chinese Danny Park. <laughs> well, for the role of Danny Zuko, he ended up playing the, um, uh, uh, who sang beauty school dropout. Oh, um, the angel. yeah. The yeah, angel. Yeah. Uh, teen the angel. Yeah. And Danny was gay. And that's fine. I don't think we've seen Gay Zuko in Greece. In a minute. In a minute. We Nowadays, right. in, in 2023, if they were like revamping this for Broadway, it would 100% be gay Chinese, gay, Danny Zuko. Chinese <laughs> Danny Zuko. We might have been ahead of our time at Shortgrass. This was circa 2003. So, uh, but so we I, did a West Side Story, and the guy who was playing um, Tony was just gayer than gay, and it, nobody believed it. Like the Tony and Maria, saying, yeah. nobody believed it, and he had to die at the end, right? And my mom, in the middle of this high school play, just goes, "Oh God, die already!" And like this thick Bostonian accent. And, and we go backstage, oh and literally this kid, Tony, was like, did your mom have to ruin it? And I was like, I don't know what to tell did you. Your mom have she's, to ruin she's it. She's a loose cannon. And you honestly. You accidentally sang Brad instead of Maria. <laughs> exactly. I was like, you weren't selling it, so this is not my fault. This is not my I'm fault. I'm like, Robin got a bigger laugh than you did, okay? <laughs> Sorry about it. Sorry about it, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So why don't you play Danny Zuko? You, like. It, so it, that gave me, and, and so I wrote my college essay on that. Because oh, that, very it was, cool. It was like, the show was so fun. Like being on stage was like it, the plays were a hobby, mm -hmm. you know, and sports were 
were, and, and not that I thought I was going to go pro, but I, I just wanted to, I think, put all my eggs in that basket, at least for high school. And I was yeah. kind of new, maybe acting or something, but was probably scared to, to lock in on like, this is to pick that because I knew how much uncertainty and how tough it was Yeah, moving to LA and my mom, it was just my mom and I at that time because my sister was uh, at a boarding school for a little bit. So we got to be best friends and enemies to where it was like, mom, can you wash my b- basketball jersey? But then like, leave me alone because I'm a man. I'm 17. Yeah. So this push and pull. But, you know, um, that's why we got so so close. And she was always uh, helping build the sets and paint the things to try to be involved. To like, I love that you had an involved mom, though. Oh, yeah. Well, she had she loved it, too. She always she loved it. And she, I think also, too, it was like I was. You know, my grandpa, I remember even uh, told me when, when we, uh, when the, we were, they were splitting and he was like, you're the man of the house now. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm, I'm, you, you, you're like, I'm 11. I'm 11. Yeah. yeah. I have pop tarts caked around my mouth. And you told me, uh, and a tea cup. And, <laughs> and you told me last week, I can't wear sweatpants in my bar mitzvah. So pick a Go fuck lane. yourself. <laughs> and so, um, and so, uh, yeah, it helped though that she, but she wanted, and she loved it. And she's, her name's Puddin. She's a little Oklahoma Jew, and mm-hmm. she loved. Your this. mom's name is Puddin. Her name's Carolyn. Her my grandpa gave her the name Puddin as like a nickname, and everyone knows her as Puddin. I love that. Yeah, my mom's D- Red. We call her D for Red. Yeah. yeah. Your mom and my mom would be buds in a heartbeat. Yeah. And so she loved to be around all of it, and so uh, and and uh, and the plays were just after that. I was like the feeling of of just acting and all the whole process was like so. F- so fun, for lack of a better word, that I was like, I think I want to try to do this because, you know, just the whole process, too, of, like, rehearsing and just creating the whole thing and, and practicing and trying to get better and, 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 you know, watching Grease a billion times and trying to get little things to add on and, and creating the – not creating the character, but trying to, you know, and, and working so hard. I had to, you know, I'd find enough voice, but, like, really working hard to try to – I just enjoyed all that. The first day that you had to be off book, I still had these night oh, yeah. terrors of being – it's, like, the one-act competition play, and it was the day that we have to be off book, and, like, no one's off book, and our director is just like, I gave you one motherfucking job, you know? But it's this nightmare that I had that I'm not off book, and I was always get great at memorizing, but I had this reoccurring nightmare that I'm that? not off book, or I'm theater walking out. Theater kids. We always have you this – walk out. Isn't it terrifying? It's I, terrifying. I'd rather be falling out of a plane that in my dream. Push me out of a building in, in Russia. Having yes, <laughs> yes. Than being in like uh, a little night music and not being off book or whatever. It's it's just, it's this like, Crippling. oh my God, I, I'll sometimes wake up with like full blown night sweats, sweat through the sheets because I had the dream, Wait, the night terror. And Jeff is like, what happened? And then you're like, oh, yeah. I forgot the second act, <laughs> the opening song. And it's like, dear God. <laughs> I thought you were getting I'm like, listen, honey, it somewhere. was Chicago. You have no idea. I forgot the lyrics to all that jazz. And I'm not going to be okay. I said, all that beef. <laughs> I just panicked. I was thinking, I just seen a beef commercial earlier in the day and people laughed. So I was, you know. All that beef. Oh my God. Wait, so when you went to college, did yeah. you also then do theater arts? Yeah, so I went, I auditioned for the- Where'd BFA, you go? USC in, in LA. Oh, yeah. fucking smart. I guess, yeah. USC? That you got enough. into the USC theater program? Yeah. I went to the University of Mississippi, okay? Yeah, not- you, it worked out fine. It did work out fine. But wow, okay, so yeah. you got in for so the air. In there, so my uh, SATs were shit. You know, I just, uh, I had good uh, GPA and extracurricular, and they were like, you Same, should, same, same. You should, they're like, you should wear a, a yarmulke and grow some Hasidic braids because diversity will give you a nice boost. Yeah. And so, um, and so uh, they're like, chew it up. And so uh, a lot of financial aid. Grandparents helped for a semester. Mom pulled a single mom card for a bit. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of loans. And it was like 38 a year then. I think it's not Damn. 70. Ole Miss um, was like 10K all in with a sorority, and they gave you keys to a BMW. That sounds awesome. <laughs> My dad shows up and he goes, wait a minute. Wait, this is, I'm like, this for three years, it was like 10K. It was great. That's it's fun. changed now. But when I hear kids who like went to like USC or these like amazing colleges, and then it was that expensive, I'm like, I don't know how anybody does oh, it. Oh, the fraternity row. I was an AP the Jew frat. Oh, hell yeah. We made a bong out of a shofar. Yeah. We, yeah. There was, yeah. There was was Escalades, BMWs, Porsches, and then I had driven from Oklahoma. My grandparents' Mercury Grand Marquis, hell yeah, ninety-eight, which is like a boat Care Bear cloud of a car. Uh-huh. And it, and I remember every weekend it'd be parked, and everyone's like, "Whose grandparents are visiting?" I was like, "Yeah, some <laughs> fucking loser." That's mine. And uh, you guys want to sleep in the back of the trunk? It's big. Yeah. And so, um, and then uh, I had a girlfriend at Santa Barbara at the time, and so would drive every weekend to go see her. And SC, so I auditioned for that uh, acting school because they were like, if you get into that. And they take you first, then they'll school will have to take you. Right. Because 
again, I would second guess myself on these SAT tests. I wasn't a good test taker. I think my my the highest I got was eleven twenty, and the mean age of my incoming class was fifteen eighty. Wait a minute, how the fu- okay? But here's the thing: I the highest I ever made was like a ten thirty. Ten thirty did not get into a single college. Yeah. Did not get into a single place. And I did the thing where I wanted to go to Pepperdine, so I auditioned oh, yeah, for the theater cool. program, flew out, got the whole kit right and caboodle tour right on the beach, and I got into the program. But then I didn't get into the school, <laughs> and I was student body president of my high school. Like literally, like politician wore that. They missed out. Yeah. I mean, I, I I ended up where I needed to end up, but I this is such a similar thing where I was like, it's, I'll get in for the arts, yeah. but I'm never getting in scholastically. That's I had a good weird. GPA. If they took you for the school, they should have then. Well, they buttered my biscuits, and then it was a strong rejection. Wow. Yeah, fucked up. Just sorry. I I um distraught. I had <clears throat> absolutely distraught, and so then I only had two weeks before graduation to get into college, so I had to see what schools had rolling admission and had like a decent theater program. Yeah. It was Alabama and Ole Miss, so I applied to both schools as a poultry science major because. I thought that would give me a better a chance of getting into the school. So um, when I showed up to Ole Miss, I was technically a poultry science major. Holy shit. Yeah, and then I switched to theater, and then I had to audition, and then I got in. Yeah. What is college in Mississippi like? And Honestly, the best four years of my life. It awesome. is this, like, Oxford is this weird little artsy town. It's this bubble of, like, liberal arts and, like... You know, I just, it's the fucking best. I wouldn't say the theater department gave me any razzle-dazzle, but I will say. You're like, they actually did sing all that beef and yeah, all that jazz. Yeah, 100%. And they, it was not a mistake. It was 100%. In. Yeah, 100%. But sorry, go back to your, so you're you're do, you're in the frat. In the frat, doing uh, uh, musicals, you know, um, and. Uh, and how'd your frat brothers take you in the musicals? I was a funny guy. I yeah. was like, you know, I, and this is why I'm friends with a lot of the kids that I went through with, because. I didn't haze. I wasn't like, piss your pants. Yeah. Or you're fucking out of here. Which yeah. One guy did. And I started laughing. I was so baked. And I was just like, and he turns around. He's like, A Ray. They call me A Ray because there are other Adams. And, uh, and he goes, well, uh, all Jews. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, hey, stop laughing. And I'm like, I'm sorry, man. You just asked another grown man to piss himself. I go, and then the kid was like really weird about it. And then, and then I and then they're like, get out of here if you're gonna laugh. And I remember walking out. I go, hey man, I go, if you don't want to be here because of this, I get it. And then they're like, hey, Eric, get the fuck out. <laughs> and I used to like, w- I bought a wig and I would dress up as like old frat brothers from other chapters. Yeah. And come in during like the lineups where people were like, here's a here's a legit real thing that somebody would gripe about. They'd walk down the line, up and down the line. A guy named maybe named like David Wolf, right? And he'd go. So apparently, one of our pledges was talking to a girl that I like. Everyone's like, ooh, what the fuck? Brothers, please. I don't know if you guys remember uh, a girl named Chelsea that I brought by the house last week. Big fat titties. Sweet smile. Cool dad. And Spencer, what the fuck? Brothers, please. I was talking to her on campus, knowing that she's been here in my room. What the fuck? Brothers, please. So then I would come up and be like, I think my name was like Niles Barnfather from Chico State. Uh huh. <laughs> Chico some, State. Was, fuck yeah. And I, and I walked up and I go, I go, and I had like a British accent. And I go, brothers, I go. First of all, I go. Someone I brought to this uh, school. I go. I travel with my favorite foods. I had gushes <laughs> and beefaroni, cans of beefaroni downstairs, and they're all gone. Who the fuck? Ate my beefaroni. And they start kind of start laughing. And then I took a deer head that was in the corner and I took it up and I was like, who thinks they can beat this deer in a staring contest? And then they would all start kind of laughing. And then the other uh, brothers would start laughing. And I'd go, brothers, please. And then, whole, and then one kid stood up. This kid was not like a great music uh, producer. Stood forward and goes, I can do it. Because he's trying to take it seriously. And then I'm like, oh, this is Dude, so I fucking. Can't, this is and then so fucked up. In front of his face. And he's kind of like laughing and I'm laughing. And then like under my breath, I'm like, dude, thanks for fucking playing along. And he's just like this. <laughs> you know, because I was like, I'm not going to do this and mean it. But they already know that I'm like trying to make this light and really honestly eat up time. And so then yeah. I kind of hold it like this. And then I went like that and he blinked. And I go, the deer is undefeated. And like they, then, then they would have these chapter meetings where they would break down all the pledges. So all the brothers would sit in a room and they'd go, all right, let's go through uh, all the guys that came out tonight. Um, Jack Haley, what do we think? Uh, so 
I talked to Jack at the bar for like a good 20 minutes. Um, big you know, douche. Big douche. <laughs> big fucking loser. Kind of poor. Kind of poor. Tiny dick, you could tell, through his pants. Uh, and uh, Cystic I, acne, cystic no dice. Acne, uh, he's got uh, e- e- eczema uh, and egg salad and uh, I think monkey pox. And I just think it's a hard pass. And somebody else would go, raise your hand. I actually talked to Jack and chill dude. Chill dude. Uh, <laughs> loves weed, loves tits. We all, who loves tits? We all tits. And uh, I think we should let him in. And then I would raise my hand after each person. They go, uh, hey, Ray, I go, I also talked to Jack for a good 45 minutes, man. The guy, like, he bonded over, like, sports and comedy. But then when he turned to go grab some uh, chicken kebabs, I noticed he had a big black dick dangling off the end of his shoulder. I, tra- I treat this as an acting exercise. Everybody starts laughing. I go, I just don't know if that's what we want. I don't know if that's what we want. So it's also, currently in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. We're worried about him. He's not going to make it He's long. Make it. So then they go, all right, who else? And they go on to somebody else. All right, uh, Spencer Torgan. Spencer. And again, somebody raised their hand. I talked to Spencer, real chill dude, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Loved him. We actually went to the same high school. Loves tits again. I'll be huge plus. And then A-Ray, uh, day, take it seriously. I go, I am. So I was talking to Spencer, and dude, lo- he both we both, LeBron's our favorite player. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he drives a grand marquee like my, like my grandparents gave me. But when he turned to go to the buffet, man, big black dick, and they go, God damn it, A-Ray. I go, is that what we want? Is that the house we want to be, the guy with black dick on the shoulder? And then they kick me out, and they go, leave. And I stand up, and I'm high as balls. And I stand up, and I go, I just got one question. I go, who's coming with me? <laughs> and I go, I go, I got weed in my room. And six stoners stood up, and they're like, we'll go with you. And they, like, follow me out. That you're... I, I got to be the funny one. I love, I'm still friends with some of these kids. I love, and, though, that that was the fraternity, like, the rush me. experience. Yeah. For women, it was so different. We had, like, 25 of these women, because I was a Delta Gamma, and it was, we were the head sorority. Like, we yeah. We, yeah, we were the... Um, it was a good one at USC. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. fun. Yeah, hot, like blonde. Yeah, just like not like, I don't know, not... Yeah, I don't know. I, the, I mean, you tell me. Like, it's you can get, I guess, like any fraternity, sorority experience, you can get people that are taking it way too serious and are like... Well, we were the home chapter. So we were the founding chapter. Like, oh. like Delta Gamma started at the University of Mississippi. Holy so we had these shit. crazy fucking alumni, these women who had been like, you know, sisters back in like the 20s, show up, and they were the ones who got the final say. So I was like head, I was pledge class president, bid day chair, and so like I had to deal with like recruit all the hot girls from Atlanta, and then they come in like, <clears throat> they're like, we don't know where Atlanta, Georgia is. If she's not from Columbus, Mississippi, she's a whore. And I would literally have to fight with these like elder alumni and be like, we need diversity in here. Asking to get somebody from fucking Atlanta, Georgia is not that big of like I'm not even asking for like an Asian girl, okay? I'm just asking for somebody from two states over. Oh my God. It was fucking insane. So when I hear guys on the other end, like the way that like, you know, rush would happen for the bros or like chapter meetings, ours were literally dictated by like, you know, oh, like hundred year old women from Jack. In Mississippi. How old legit were they coming in to make these calls? I mean, it was 70s, in the 70s, 80s? Yeah, oh, easy. Yeah. And Can they, you imagine an older dude coming back to a frat? To be no. Like, Gavin <laughs> is not going to be an A pie. Over my dead body, <laughs> Damien can't. Look, I know Hotman, and he's not a. That's so crazy that these women had the audacity to A, fill their downtime with like critiquing younger guys like that's so they had sad. nothing else to do and then if you were like a triple legacy right so if you were a legacy of men oh, like yeah. your mom yeah. your grandma everybody no i would have to be the person to make the phone calls of like we had to cut michelle and they're like and i'd have to talk to like the, the irate mississippi mom well, like, everyone <laughs> in the family's been in there everybody from natchez is a delta gamma how come you cut her and i'm like i i didn't make the phone i didn't make the call you know like our alumni did and it was fucking cutthroat so i'm so jealous of the power that the guys yeah. had just be like Easy. you know what dylan had a medium-sized dick and he has a cool sports car and like his dad can get his tickets to like a, a hawks game bro it was that, that i i was so jealous of that it was that uh easy peasy and i mean still funny even and that's why i would like make jokes because I, like, I can't believe we're in this room like ta- like breaking down these people in that way and there's one kid they didn't let in the house he's now i think he was in the fraternity but he no, no, no. He oh. he pledged with us, and they didn't let him in. And I think he was assistant to a guy at Paramount, uh, and then and then uh, after five months, got moved up to like VP. <laughs> he's and, actually and, Jeff Bezos. Is who he is. He's not far off. And then he was at, uh, had a comedy at Netflix for a little bit. And now I'm not sure where he is, but he's like. And you're Easter. actively trying to suck his dick. <laughs> I remember I went in for an audition once, which I have nothing to do with the selection process. But I was right. in the group that was like trying to go in with him. And our mutual buddy got in with me. And, uh, and I remember I went in for the audition. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? And he was like, nice to see you. And I was like. 
oh, he thinks I, he's either holding it against me that I got in and he didn't, or maybe he thinks that I had something to do with him getting cut. So weird. And I almost brought it up in the audition, like halfway through after I did the read, it was almost like I wanted to be like, like you know, I, you know, I had nothing to do with you getting in. But then I was like, if I say that and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You're going like, to make it so fucking yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. And then he's going to jump off a bridge. I, I'm not um, uh, opposed to making it weird if people are dicks. And I know you're uh, going to ask me about um, my absolutely nots. Yeah. And my absolutely nots, if it's like a man and my wife will sometimes get upset if like I, she hates confrontation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm like, when people are being I'm not dicks, great with it either. You got to let them know. Yeah. And she's like, do you? And I go, <laughs> yeah. There's a guy, there's a guy in a seat in front of me uh, in a first class seat and I'm pressing the t little TV screen as I thought gently as you can as gently as I can. Yeah. But the screen's giving some pushback. Yeah. So, Hey, sometimes you got to up your push, your, your push. And he just sits up and turns goes, Hey man, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Come on, man. Sits back around. And I'm just like, <laughs> and she just grabbed him. She goes, please. don't do it. Please don't do it. That's what I do to my husband every day. I'm like, please. Uh, I'm like, agree to, gr to disagree. Like, just, it's not worth it. I just say it's not worth it all the not time. Not worth it. And yeah. then I get up and come, I go to the bathroom. And by the way, like I'm in the bathroom for not even 90 seconds. And the stewardess comes by and goes, excuse me, sir, is everything okay in there? And I was like, yeah, bitch, you served <laughs> eggs on a plane. They were microwaved and they didn't sit well. So fucking surprise. So I'm tearing so it up I'm in first class. Here. By the way, I couldn't take my pants off without headbutting the sink because there's not enough space to fucking sit. <laughs> and so and so then I get back to my seat and I actually kind of somebody's trying to squeeze by so I kind uh -huh. of bumped his seat as I uh -huh. sat down just kind of the you know, yeah. seat bump and then go back to pay, make another selection so a seat bump and then this and he turned around again and goes I mean are you just trying to make me fucking mad and then I was just like so then she just goes please stop or don't do anything and so to try to like handle it but also make a joke I just lean forward and I go dude I'm so sorry I go it's, it feels like you're having one of these days. Yeah. And he just goes, stop talking to me, man. And I go, <gasps> it sounds like you're having one of these days. I go, I am fully ready and able and willing to go fight you in the bathroom right now. <laughs> and he goes, what? I go, I'll go fight you in the bathroom. I just blew it right up now. already. Blew it, up. it is fucking hot fire ready to go. I want to go back in there to see fucking Afghanistan. Or, and uh, by fight you in the bathroom, yeah. I mean absolutely put your penis inside of me. <laughs> and that just made it weird enough for me to go, to, to get like joy out of it. And then I dropped it. Um, but so you, you're good at calling it out, but here's the thing. Are you of actually physical fighter? Because no, been in a couple fights in, but actually the last one was probably high school when we were, um, I was there with a buddy's, uh, soccer, uh, a team from high school and I went yeah. as like team managers so I could go. Yeah. And we were in, uh, Austria and it was, um, oh, what, fuck. Was, we went international on the was, high school trip. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, my buddy's dad had organized this trip for years and, and, it was, I think, 2000, f fresh 2001. And so, um, uh, like, I'd say, I don't know, February, April after 9-11, you know? And so these guys were, like, we were hammered in the streets, and these guys were screaming, like, you know, Osama and Fulcum or whatever. And it was, like, it was just so crazy that I just, like, You just snapped. became full patriotic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and just did a classic, like, they were just trying to egg us on. Yeah. Because we were just Americans, like, you know, kind of just lost in the, in the street party. And and they uh, these two guys just were in our ear. And I just very much like, like, fucking not cool, man. <laughs> fucking say it one more time, dude. And the guy just. My uncle's a vet. Yeah, dude. And just, just scream, I play Call of Duty nightly, man. <laughs> and he, uh, and then I fucking just swung. And then yeah. two guys jumped on me and then down on the ground. And I got a lot of those in while we were on the ground. And, um. And uh, and then that was the last one I really remember. But I more often than not, I'm like, and I even have to. I don't have road rage, thankfully, because I think the the first time I saw, I mean, I'll, I'll yell stuff in the car under my breath. But that's what my husband does, yeah. But the first time I saw a story where it was like a guy haunted a guy and he pulled out a fucking AK-47 and it's shot insane. him at the stoplight in front of the Arco, I was like. Oh, I'm never screaming out the window. That's why I do say now, agree to disagree, or like, just let it go. It's not let worth go. it, because it's A, not. everybody has a camera, B, everyone has, you don't know, like, you're not dealing, like, back in the day, maybe 20 years ago, you were like, all right, we're gonna fucking, you know, all right, bitch, meet me outside the bar, let's yeah. fucking go. A couple yeah. slaps in, you're good. Yeah. Nowadays, everyone's fucking crazy. Everyone's crazy. It's just not worth it. I'm it, like, it's just absolutely never fucking worth I it. I think I also take it as like, the comic in me is almost like treating it like a heckler or crowd work. Like, yeah. when I was getting back to 
LAX a few weeks ago. I'm getting into an Uber. And uh, uh, as I'm walking around, another guy and three of his friends were loading up their bags. And I go, oh, I go, hey, man. And he goes, excuse me? And I go, oh, I'm sorry, I think this is, I think this is a, my Uber. And he goes, I don't think so. And I go, oh, uh, I just look at it. And he, goes, and he goes, yeah. He goes, are you Adam? I go, yeah. He goes, me too. I go, well, there's probably at least 10 more of us yeah. walking yeah. around uh, the terminal right now. But, but also the license plate is what I'm going off of that. Yeah. And just trying to be, you know, cause he's yeah. coming in hot and he goes, he goes, Oh, you think it's your car? I go, yeah, I'm just, I'm going, again, I'm going off of this and it looks like that. And then, um, and the driver was like, Oh yeah, I think it's, you know, and he goes, he goes, I say, he goes, I'm so sorry. I just heard Adam. And I said, yes, yeah. and whatever. And, uh, and the guy goes, okay. And he goes, goes to his friends. He goes, okay, I guess this isn't our car. And he starts to unload his bags. And I go, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I don't know so, why this is not. I'm not I, I have the picture evidence. This is look, actually look not at, your car. I this and he goes, yeah, I guess it's not our car. He goes, come on. And he goes, he goes, he goes, yeah, it's not our car. And the guy's being real nice about it. He says it right in front of me. And I just go like this. I go, I go, hey, you all right, man? Because then yeah. I'm just like, you're just actively being rude, which again, yeah. you can let it go. Same thing in a show with, with Crowerick. You don't have to address everything. And I now have gotten you know, a little more cognizant of pick and choose. It's like, right. if you ignore it, then the crowd, if you didn't hear it, then maybe they didn't hear it. And if they did hear it, I mean, sometimes you just have to address it if it yeah. was so crazy. And just yell, you dumb cunt. And then, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I should have maybe just, I thought about saying that to him. And then I just go, I go, are you all right? He goes, oh, I'm great. And I go, I go, hey man, I go, <laughs> It's gonna get better. It's and gonna he goes, get better. What? I go, it's gonna get better. And I was just like, that was almost like waving when someone like honks and cuts you out. Like, yeah. Or Let thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just go, it's gonna get better. He goes, what the fuck are you talking about? And I go, it is gonna, just, just, just in general. And then he just goes, God. And then he walked away huffing and puffing. And so that gave me like, not that I needed the last word, but it, it was my way of, 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 you know, just settling and not screaming and going, quit being an asshole, man. But it was so baffling that he was so quick to go, I guess it's not our car. And I was like, I kept checking my phone being like, am I just reading this wrong? And then the Uber driver was like, fuck that guy, man. When people double down, that's when I start to get crazy. But like, oh. it, we were just like, I had, the, I had the evidence, right? I'm like, I've got the receipts. Just let me get in the motherfucking Mazda right now. <laughs> I know. Yeah, everybody, uh, traveling, as much traveling as we do, everybody's an asshole all the time. Yes. And I'm, uh, my biggest thing right now is, you know, obviously I'm putting myself in first class when I'm flying because I do oh, it yeah. so much. But the the entitlement, and I'm not shitting on, on men, but the entitlement of these finance bros that think that literally i'm diamond i'm hoping to be 360 on delta all the things they think that matters they but they think that literally they will bombard you and i'm like i'm i'm not one of those people who needs like rush on to get on the airplane but they will literally jump in front of you and i've literally had a guy before say like it's first class and i'm like i'm in first class i may be the only woman right now but go fuck yourself oh gross. yeah yeah so gross also, right like you're in row two and they're in row four <laughs> and they're somehow trying to like right. leave the plane before you and you're like bitch row by row row by row Gary. yeah it, oh, it's that makes me so mad but yeah. I, I see those guys all the time they're on the plane like 30 minutes before the pilots even there their laptops open they're already sucking out a jack and coke and they're like got spreadsheets open mm -hmm. that fucking are probably fake spreadsheets and, and they're, they're just talking it. about synergy and yelling about like close the deal, close, close the deal. it, yeah. four mil. They just scream four mil. You have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. All right, real quick, um, is there an absolutely yes in your life? Like anything positive that you have gone through recently or that you've experienced? It could be anything as much as like I really love turkey sandwiches right now. I'm on a little turkey sandwich kick. Like Whoa. absolutely yes to a fucking good Sammy. Give me a you know what I mean? Salad. Uh, oh, Sammy. Right. How now. do you how do you like it though? Do you like it on a croissant, like a toasted croissant? There's a place called the Carving Board um, in LA that has a pretzel bread oh, they put around the chicken salad, and I'll pretzel bread I'll is so right underrated. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> unreal. Which is not how you're supposed to eat it, and they tell you that when you do it in the store i will literally just spread apart the sandwich place it on my labia and just let it marinate there sit on it i won't go back and forth i'll just sit quietly <laughs> with that on my clit yeah uh, uh my buddy real quick you just reminded me of a story when we were in vegas my buddy and i he came down when i was doing shows there and he was about to have his kid like a month later his first kid his yeah wife goes just go see your buddy in vegas and uh and and before the kid comes is one last trip before we have to lock down and he he got lost. He went to a, a strip club by himself after my show. And then I get calls from him like every, it's like, like 2 a.m. He goes, Ray, Ray, fuck, I'm leaving the Spirit Rhino. I don't know where I am. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I got to go. Click. And then 20 minutes later, Ray, Ray. All right, I'm walking inside the freeway. Oh, I see McDonald's. Oh, shit, they're closed. Fuck. All right, I'll call you back. Click. 
<laughs> then 20 minutes later, Ray, Ray, okay, I'm in a gas station. Can you come get me? Can you come get me? I know, hey, man, it's 4.30. I've been asleep. Okay, fuck. Oh, I think I still see the McDonald's. Oh, fuck, it's still close. Okay, fuck, bye. And then he walked in with a pizza at like 8 a.m., and he laid down on a couch, and he held a piece of pepperoni over his face, and he goes, sit on my face, you pizza bitch. And he <laughs> dropped it on his face and fell asleep, and I took a picture of it, and I blew, up, blew it up as a poster and sent it to him, and I go, every time your, your kid gets a little out of whack, just look at this poster and yeah. remember how you were a month prior. Anyway, so uh, chicken salad sin, uh, <laughs> fired up about. Um, pretzel bread. Pretzel I also bread. love a potato roll. Oof, yeah. I mean. Hawaiian roll. So are you asking food-wise of what is my. No, I'm just asking in general. I was just. absolutely. Yeah, do, yes. you have a, do you have anything positive in your life? Doesn't have to be chicken salad. But if you love a chicken salad, I think I like it with a little nut. I like it with a touch of celery. I like it with, a, you know, I'm a, a, a grape. Chi- I'm a big chips and salsa guy. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm a big uh, burrito guy. Yeah. Um, I love me a good chicken Caesar salad. Um, Haven't had a good chicken Caesar in a minute. Yeah, you can fuck it up. You can half ass a chicken Caesar. Your chicken can be bad. Your chicken can be cold. Uh, yeah. Your heart can be cold. Your eyes can be dead. Yeah. As a server. Mm. Um, <laughs> my mom's matzo ball soup, always a, an A plus home run any time of year. Um, I'd say if an absolutely yes, and this is going to sound like, um, like I'm looking for brownie points, but uh, when I make my wife laugh, unbelievable oh it's the greatest feeling in the world her laugh is unreal yeah and she also it's you know I'm, i i don't run bits by her so it's just all she's also like the first person I've, I've been with that like again is i think funnier than me and she and then it's come out now in the last few years that she wanted to be a comedian when she was younger but she never is trying to be funny or one up or whatever yeah but she's just really quick like one time like things there's just one example like she uh and she's got a real like high pitched voice, so she sounds kind of like a cartoon, which is already funny. And her laugh is just adorable. And when her face squints, it's really sweet. <laughs> and so she, we were getting ready uh, to um, to have sex, mm-hmm. and she um, <laughs> and uh, and I had uh, I had tweaked my back like a couple uh, weeks uh, before. Yeah, I understand that. And um, I had some tiger bomb patches on. Yeah, and I laid down, and one of them like kind of peeled off, and I go. And uh, and and she was kind of sitting on me like this, and I kind of I go, babe, I go, oop, I go, one of my t- uh, tiger man patches is peeling off, and she goes, ooh, talk dirty to me, <laughs> and we both start laughing, and just that, like the quick of that, is she's a lot of that, and it's great, and 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 which is just always. And now it's helped because if we have a dumb fight or something or whatever, we both are actively trying to squash it with a joke, which is how I've always done. I used to date a girl that was like, is everything. Okay. You think a joke with you? And I'm yeah. Like, it's probably it's gonna be because it's easier for me to kind of just deal with this. I don't like, hold shit long, and my husband's good about it too. Even though he's like a grumpy old Italian guy, I will be the first one to be like, "Listen, I'm sorry, yeah. all right." Yeah. And then immediately he can change it. Good. He yeah. can go. He, everybody thinks he's grumpy all the time, but we're, when it's us, he can change it quick. And yeah. it's like, as comedians, we need those kind of people. Where it's like, yeah. we're done. We're done. Are you good? I'm good. We're yes. fucking moving on. Yes, have to. Yeah, you have to be around other joyful people who can allow that. Because if not, you're like, I can't sit on this for six fucking months. Yeah. Yeah. Are we Gucci? Oh, I gotta go. Are we Gucci? Yeah. We gotta go put chicken salad <laughs> in our dicks. Oh, you yeah. know. <laughs> uh, she's also like loves to cook, and I can't. St- I have no patience, so mm-hmm. that's always. Yeah. Never was like I gotta be with a woman who cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. But she she just finds cool TikTok recipes and whatever, yeah. and she's always like, "I'm gonna try this," or "I made this," and I'm like, "Awesome." Um, there's nothing that turns me on more than when I come home and the grill's going or there's a crock does pot. Cook? Oh, he fucking loves it. And he's decent. He didn't salt it's things fine. enough. I'm just going to go ahead and let you know, honey. But it's like he loves that shit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, great. It, there's nothing better when you're like, you can take care of me. I'll take yep. care of you in a million other ways. But if you can feed me, we're, we're great. That's feed great. me, fuck me. And, you know. That's a good trade off. Uh, that's a good trade off. Uh, so I'd say uh, wife's laugh and uh, pup, pup snuggles is like probably the ideal. That's the absolute. Um, Yes, is that what the question? The yeah, just yes. an absolute yes. Just something like my positive happy to end space, on. My yeah. my uh, my where it's like, if like you know, uh, whatever in the business which happens all the time, where you just it, you just allow things to pile on, and you're mm-hmm. like, fuck, like I'm not gonna quit, but I yeah. I'm not having the fun I should be having. Yeah, and I and it's all on you always. I feel like to you know let, uh, the things that can sometimes pollute our our joy uh, is like you know. A compare and despair day or you know um not getting something that you wanted or or, yeah. or being mad at yourself at least for me of, of like 
you know, laying out things that I wanted to do and then not doing them and, and choosing something else. And then being like, Oof, like you got to hold yourself accountable and be better yeah. about that. So then I get always know, a then, woulda, coulda, shoulda yeah. all the time in, in comedy specifically yes. too. So then, uh, but then having her and and, pick and coming home is like and have, just at least a race. And I'm sure people are like, well, that's what it's like when you have kids too, for sure. But like I said, when I just was around my buddy's kids and fucker, hey, knock knock, <laughs> mom, fucker, yeah, gotcha, bitch. Like so that definitely goes. Well, I'm gonna wait a couple more years, you know. So I don't create the spawn of Satan. Well, hundred percent. Coming home on a Sunday night after doing shows oh, yeah. and being in bed with yeah. my two French full dogs, yeah. and I take their oh, little yeah. face and I just do this yeah. and I love them. And yep. then Jeff's like farting in the bed, bitching yep. about Fine. that you know he can't find secession on yeah. or like he <laughs> fucked it up. He fell asleep last night, and yeah. I went ahead like yeah. those kind oh, of just yeah. bullshit marital spats that end up somehow and everybody just you know having sex in yep. the bed with the dogs yep. still yep. there. Fine. That is my happy place. Yeah. yeah. And, and you just got to get creative and clever about where the dogs are yeah. so that they're yeah. not looking right at you. I guess mm -hmm. that's the difference between dogs and kids. Kids are never just on the bed, like, staring right at you. <laughs> like, that's the only move you got tonight, huh, Dad? And you're like, didn't know you were here, Damien. Or fucking Craig. I don't know what he'll his Craig. name will be. I like Craig that. Craig Ray, Qu yeah. Who, you know, think about it. Who was ever like, I'm going to name my kid Craig? Weird. Weird. Gary, too. Gary. Gary. My uh, nephew Jackson has a friend named Gary, and he's mm -hmm. eight. And I'm like, if you're eight and you're Gary, you better figure this shit out real quick. Yeah. Why do you not work <laughs> at a body shop, Gary? Your haircut's sucks you pop out of bushes to scare your fucking uh your buddy's uh, uh uncle yeah real quick we are living in the success uh, succession uh um like it's the finale i think is um was yesterday or is next week mm -hmm. are you a fan of the show i i watched the first three episodes and fell asleep okay. and now i've got to get into it but i know all the, the shit yeah the show what is your show right now um rupaul's drag race all stars fuck i'm I've going back many times to get into that it's so joyful and it'll make you laugh it is a reality show and i don't really watch a ton of reality but it's a game show where it's like all they do is give bits to each other all day and it's cunty and it's fantastic i need something that is so dumb but like aesthetically beautiful Have that's my show. Says it's cunty and fantastic. <laughs> Please let me be a guest judge. Oh, I would, would die. Murder. I that. would die. Yeah. But all right. So you're you're living life. Where can everybody find you? What are you on the road doing? Like, are you're you're touring? You're doing touring, all the shit. Touring adamraycomedy.com for all the uh, tour date info. When does this come out? Uh, maybe t t on Wednesday. Okay, I don't know. Great. It'll come out soon. Uh, yeah. Uh, coming up, I got Sacramento, uh, Reno. Unfortunately, go visit um, the last place my ex. <laughs> Where the and fuck I are you, yeah. Jenna? <laughs> Go uh, uh, um, uh, to my website again for tickets. Uh, big shows in Seattle coming up. Irvine Improv this weekend, the 27th. Oh, hell yeah. 27th. Um, and then Fort Lauderdale, Phoenix, Boston, Chicago. Podcast about last night with Heather's been on. Uh, we got to get you live in the flesh when you come back to Let's LA. do it. Uh, and then um, I'm in the Barbie movie that comes out in July. You're in the uh, Barbie movie? Yeah. Oh, fuck, like God scenes. damn it. We didn't yeah. even get... Okay, the Barbie Margot movie. Robbie, yeah. awesome. Ryan yeah. Gosling, awesome. Both of them, hot. If you ask yeah. me which one, <laughs> if they proposed a sexual night, uh, you know, uh, current affair style, I'd go... Uh, not current affair, indecent proposal. Yeah. And current affair was a, sh a show, wasn't it? Like in the 90s? Yeah, the current, current affair. affair. Yes, it yes. It was like, they found a body at the top of the Cold Stone Creamery. Yeah, anyway. Um, it was like Unsolved Mysteries. Yes, Current Affairs was, was yeah. basically Unsolved Mysteries, yeah. which I saw somebody doing a bit, and I don't know who did it, but they're like, isn't every mystery unsolved? <laughs> like, that's why it's a mystery. I that's don't know. So I saw funny. that on TikTok the other day. I don't know whose bit that is, but that you I was like, that's the are. greatest. You know who you are. That was great. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's from Shucked. That's right. It's from Shucked the Musical. Yeah. Yes, Shucked the Musical, which that's you need to go so see. Funny. You need okay. to go to, to New York, go see Shucked the Musical. Fucking funny, amazing. You would also be great in it. Can't wait. He played the hot, the hot cowboy. And Chucked, couldn't he? Or the, uh, the yeah. Can you still sing? You can still sing, right? Give me a second. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me do some setups and some push ups <laughs> and a dip and uh, get a uh, Photoshop of a shot of Gosling. So hot. So hot. The guy like daggers. I don't think he blinked the whole time he talked to me. He was just like, and I talked to him about comedy for a little bit after. So sweet. Anyway, uh, that comes out in July, and then um, um, I guess you can watch Pam and Tommy and Chippendales that I'm in on Hulu. You're, you're in everything. Um, Adam has been in everything. Once you see him, you're gonna, you've are gonna you literally done everything. And do more, hoping to play your husband. Yeah, hopefully NBC. I still need Susan. Susan, can you please read Susan, the script? Let's go. And let us Quick know, gander, because we would love to do a multi-cam. We'll crush it. If this pod doesn't give you enough reason to want to see more of McMahon and Ray, the, we don't know what the fuck you want. <laughs> and you don't know what the fuck you want either. Yeah. Adam, thank you for being here. Thank you. Everybody follow you, you. on all of it. Love, Love you more. Thanks for having me. Hey, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs>